broad topic that we have to uh, grapple with here, uh, but I'm going to hand straight over to the Minister uh, to give us some introductory words, if you would. First of all, uh, I want to thank you for the invitation. It's a great honor for me to participate again here at the Economist Forum under TIFF. Uh, I think it's very important that the Economist decided to participate to the TIFF, and it gives us an added value to all the things we want to do. So thank you very much for that. As an introduction, I would say that since my colleague and dear friend Peter Altmaier said uh, just before that Greece has become a role model in the economy, I couldn't say much more. <laughs> because you can understand that uh, we had the recent decade a lot of conflicts and arguments with the German government about the reforms and about the direction Greece is going. From that stage to being a role model and having the performance of our economy you saw two days ago uh, from the announcement of our national statistic uh, agency, uh, I think we have covered uh, a lot of ground and we have done a lot of job. So uh, I'm very proud. Uh, during my term and during Mitsotakis' government, Greece has uh, the record of FDIs uh, and investment in general of our recent decades. In 2021, we had our record of the last 30 years. And uh, the statistics shows that 2022 were, uh, were until now 10% above of our last year's record. Uh, if you uh, imagine that this is happening under the pandemic, under the war, the higher rates, the energy crisis, the inflation, and uh, all the uh, difficult things and the turbulent things we have in world economy, I think this achievement is even more uh, important. I'm confident, I have here my friend George Tunis, uh, the U.S. Ambassador to Greece. I want to thank him and in personal basis, but mostly as a Greek to an American. Uh, because during these three years, uh, after many times, I have to say, United States of America has a really important presence in the uh, investment area in Greece uh, in a very uh, strong way. Uh, here in Thessaloniki, we have some of the most uh, well-known uh, American investments in the country. Uh, Pfizer and their digital uh, multiple center it's one of the jewels now of the city and goes extremely well. And other U.S. investments like Cisco, Deloitte, and uh, others. So I want to thank him because uh, what we started to discuss with the United States uh, in November 19 has already been uh, in action. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, that's a very, uh, a very friendly way to begin, begin our, our panel. Uh, so thank you for your words. Let me hand over to you, um, Ambassador. Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to put words into your mouth. I'll just let you give us your impressions on the, on the topic that's in front of us. Well, I want to thank The Economist uh, for having this. Um, you know, you speak about impact, and uh, here at TIFF and being here at the Economist Forum uh, is incredibly uh, impactful. <laughs> you know, I remember uh, the very dark days when uh, Greece was a, a punching bag, and it was very painful to me uh, to see not only politicians across Europe, um, you know, speaking about kicking him out of the Euro, but how they were portrayed. <coughs> Um, and it speaks to the Greek spirit and Greek resiliency that they stood up, they would stood probably a 25, 30% contraction in their economy, 27% unemployment rate, and create a series of humanitarian uh, crisis. And despite all odds, uh, they have turned their economy and their country uh, around the Mitsotakis government uh, has been reform-minded. Uh, they have made this country uh, a beacon. Uh, when you look at 7.7% GDP growth last quarter, this isn't rhetoric. This is intrinsic scientific data. Over 8% GDP growth last year. This is the top in Europe. This is the growth leader of Europe. And it's also the gateway 
Um, it is a large part on how Europe is going to deleverage Gazprom and Russia. Um, I don't want to get into how we got into this mess. Um, the rearview mirror is very, very small, and, and the front windshield is very large for a reason. We have to look forward and go forward. And as we go forward, everyone is saying that Greece is the gateway to energy independence for the Balkans. They have the existing infrastructure, and the new infrastructure that's needed um, is in the process of being built or, or considered, and we have to uh, support that, because that speaks to energy independence, and, you know, it's very obvious that Russia has used energy as a geopolitical uh, tool. And this is how we get Russia's foot off of Europe's neck, which is something I think we all agree needs uh, to happen. Uh, but Greece's reforms in this city has led to uh, Pfizer, Deloitte, uh, Cisco, across the country, <clears throat> the digitization efforts that are miraculous. I mean, in the United States, uh, I have a COVID card that's this little piece of paper that's crinkled and everything, and in Greece, it's on a phone. Uh, I have a driver's license I have to pull out. Greece, is, it's, it's on a phone. So digitization efforts um, are, 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 are just outstanding. Uh, uh, Greece.gov is well over 2,000 things you can do online now. That has led to the uh, necessity uh, for cloud investments, AWS, Microsoft. Um, but if you look at the leading U.S. companies that are making substantial uh, investments in Greece, in not only the energy field, but in the technology field, um, it, it's really uh, unprecedented. So I need to thank uh, my friend Andonis. Um, you know, in, in, in Greece, it's just Andonis, you know, like Madonna. <laughs> um, because everyone knows Andonis and Eugenia for uh, their friendship and welcoming him here but also Andonis' efforts um, in the Mitsotakis administration. It's led to very tangible results. And as we look forward uh, to find a partner that is solutions-oriented, that is a pillar of stability, that is reliable uh, in the region, it is Greece that we look to. The military ties, the economic ties, the national security ties uh, with the United States are the best they've ever been, and uh, I assure you, they're going to get stronger. Um, I'll translate for those who didn't understand. Uh, Greece is standing strong. They're ready to participate in what I think is going to be an economic miracle in this part of the world to provide a lot of economic leadership in the Balkans, which I think is very important because I think Greece and the United States uh, and the EU need to provide more leadership in the Balkans for a whole host of reasons. Um, but the best days of Greece are ahead. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Um, well, let's, before we, we start sort of examining some of, of what you've said, let's uh, hand over to Mr. Mouragos. Um, you're officially on the panel to represent the business perspective. Um, that seems like a good idea, so why don't we hear from you uh, the business perspective on the topics we're discussing here and what you've heard. Thank you. Uh, I want to take the opportunity, because we are proud here as Greeks, that if the US ambassador in Greece is a Greek and speaks as a mother company in Greece. So I take the opportunity to speak in Greek, but it's important to understand also from the investment how important is a local partner, a Greek partner. Distinguished Mr. Minister, distinguished the U.S. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Texan Evgiko Group, uh, we're very happy that we can succeed, uh, we can contribute to the success of this year's uh, Thessaloniki Metropolitan Summit. Uh, it is held uh, um, in cooperation with uh, Power Game. Uh, our group uh, uh, is one of the sponsors. The summit is held in Thessaloniki, putting forward uh, the central role that it can play today. 
this panel refers uh, to the U.S. Greek and economic relations, uh, and it's very important to see how uh, two important persons, uh, Mr. Georgiades, the Minister of Development and Investments in Greece, uh, and the U.S. Ambassador to Greece, Mr. Tunis, uh, 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 consider this view. I would like uh, to refer to Mr. Georgiades, because during his term in this uh, uh, ministry, he has managed uh, to make uh, all investors say that he is the right man in the right place. Mr. Georgiades, through a systematic, uh, effective, uh, efficient, and frequently silent uh, service, uh, he is uh, the interlocutor of investors, uh, solving issues and attracting investments. His uh, collective work in cooperation with the Mitsotakis policy have managed to turn our country into an attractive investment orientation in the field of circular economy and recycling. The excellent work and cooperation of Mr. Yuriades and the Minister for Environment and Energy, Mr. Screckers, bring and will bring new investment in our country in this field, creating new green employment posts that are so much needed in our society, especially these days. Uh, at the same time, I would like to point out and congratulate uh, the U.S. Ambassador George Tunis uh, on the important efforts carried out uh, by the executives of the embassy to facilitate uh, American investments in our country. We know how important the effort made by the U.S. Uh, executive uh, um, in the embassy were in order to produce uh, uh, high-quality uh, American machines uh, for recycling. Uh, um, at the same time, uh, we are also grateful, uh, dear Ambassador, that uh, uh, the U.S. Ambassador to Greece is a Greek. He is one of us. Uh, he is an excellent uh, personality who ha has played an important role in the U.S., and he shows how important uh, is the role of uh, the Greek uh, diaspora in the U.S. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very important to have you here with us. We, as a Texan and Vico group, we have developed uh, an important invest investment uh, in Attica, in an area covering more than 8,000 square meters. Uh, we are dealing with production, and we have a showroom where young people, our children, uh, can see the whole cycle of recycling, uh, how the products uh, that are produced, uh, packaged, uh, they are recycled, they become raw material and they enter the industry cycle. It is important that Greece was chosen as the place where this investment was held. And it is important that this investment is held in the field of recycling and circular economy. Our country is lagging in this field, but soon enough it will become a pioneer and a leader. And it is important that this investment is carried out using American funds and American investments. We're all very happy that we can contribute and develop develop the investment and economic relations between the U.S. and Greece, because indeed we are very uh, fortunate to have more and more American investments in our country these days. Uh, and as Yanis and Netokubo said, uh, in recycling we are all one team because uh, we can be pioneers and innovative uh, and uh, bring closer the relationships of the two countries to the benefit of Greek society, of Greek citizens, and of the environment where we live. Uh, from this panel, I would like to announce and say that very soon we're going to announce uh, two important American investments in the field of uh, circular economy. This announcement will be held by the end of this year. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. Well, it's very clear that this is a <coughs> that this is an important, uh, strong, cordial relationship. Um, but I want to. Uh, but there's no but really. It's just it's it's a good thing to see. 
I do want to explore a couple of uh, themes in, in uh, our discussion now. Um, I mentioned this in the opening of the uh, conference, this, uh, these ideas of change and continuity that I think are in tension with each other in our times, perhaps in a way they haven't been for a long, a long time, so I want to look into that. Mm. First, the theme of change. Um, Greece has been through a lot, but very recently the world has been through a lot and Europe's uh, understanding of its place in the shifting geopolitical order has been through a lot too. So <clears throat> starting with the minister, I'd like to get a sense of how you feel events in Ukraine uh, have changed the saliency of the relationship with the United States. What's changed? First of all, uh, I, I want to say sorry. I forgot in the beginning of my speech to express my condolences to the United Kingdom for the loss of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. It was uh, a news that made everybody sad in the planet. Um, before the invasion of Russia in Ukraine, the relationship between uh, Greece and the United States of America had been accelerated. Uh, it's almost uh, more than 10 years now that our relationship goes to the better. And I can proudly say during uh, Mitsotakis' government, uh, there had been a level that had never been before. You know that we voted a very important uh, defense agreement with the United States of America before the invasion. And uh, we gave uh, to our American friends uh, the use of Suda Bay for a long period of time and uh, Alexandropolis port for a long period of time and Larissa. And uh, we uh, tried to find a way to do much more defense things together. Under this aspect, uh, even during Syria government to have signed a contract for the renewable uh, for the renew of F-16 to F-16 Viper, a program that uh, had been supported for New Democracy in the Parliament at that time, and now is starting uh, giving fruits. The first six planes will be in our fleet until the end of this year. And uh, you know that recently Mr. Tax government sent an LOR for uh, purchasing F-35 from Lockheed Martin in the near future. So our defense uh, relationships are really very strong. But what we raised since day one was that it's not logic and it's not stable if the relationship are only in the defense area. There should be in the economy area. And this is the reason we started a very strong partnership. I signed two deals with the United States government. Uh, we managed to exclude Greece from the blacklist of the countries that didn't uh, follow the uh, spiritual rights. Uh, we attract investments like Microsoft, Amazon, Web Services, uh, Digital Realty, and everything else in, in Greece. Uh, Texon is one of them uh, during these three years. And then the war came. I think the war will accelerate this process, and I will explain you why. First of all, suddenly and unfortunately, all this region looks much more unstable. When you feel unstable and when you feel danger, you always want to repair that. And the best way to do it and to balance it is to have a very strong ally. And the strongest ally Greece could have is the United States of America. So even if some Greeks had some doubts, under the, these new circumstances, these are gone. And from the other side, from the U.S. side now, I think the United States recognizing that Greece is a reliable partner. It's not only an ally, but it's a reliable partner. Our government works very hard to this reliable piece of, of, of the sentence. Because if you see the map, you could say that other countries around, I, didn't want, I don't want to name them now, are allies of the United States or members of NATO. But are they reliable partners? <laughs> the answer is no. And I'm not referring to Mr. Tsunis because he's an American with Greek origin, but uh, I'm uh, referring to him as an American. Can 
the United States of America or the NATO alliance really trust in this region the role of Turkey? I believe no. Recently, the U.S. Uh, Vice Minister of Economy publicly said that Turkey is violating all the sanctions against Russia. And this is true. Under the most difficult time for our ally in NATO and Europe, the Turks clearly are allies of the Russians. So in this, uh, uh, in this way, the Americans have to find a, a more stable, reliable partner, and I think Greece is that. And the Alexandropoul sport and how this <coughs> place has been strategically uh, improved during this, uh, this time of turbulence is a proof. Alexandropoul sport, I'm totally sure that in the years to come, will be much more important than anyone, any one of us have uh, imagined in the past. First of all, the FSRUs we are building there will give access to the uh, American and others LNG as a, a new source of natural gas, except the Russian natural gas, through the Balkans uh, in this everybody understands, very difficult period. So we, as a government and my ministry, I can say we give a lot of money from European funding to accelerate the process and have the FSRU ready even next year in order to be able to transfer LNG to the other Balkan countries and help them to uh, bypass all the Russian uh, policy against Europe. You know that Vladimir Putin is using natural gas as a weapon mm. against European Union uh, in a very hard way. And of course, uh, you see that uh, American troops and uh, American Navy is very often in Alexandropolis port as a base uh, that will help them have all their uh, uh, <coughs> services around this region. So I think this war will make us even closer with the United States of America, and if I can make a final comment, and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, let's uh, move on then to you, Ambassador. How have things changed? Well, before I, I tell you how things have changed, let me tell you what is the glue. It's shared common values. It's philotimo. It's a democratic value. Greece has always been on the right side of history. Even when it was consequential and difficult, you know, going back to uh, the time when the Greeks stood up to the Axis powers um, and was the first uh, allied victory over an Axis power, uh, many have said that was the turning point in the war and it was a very consequential uh, moment. When the United States was looking to form their government, uh, they looked back 2,500 years, and it was the Greek democratic principles uh, that they adopted. And then 50 years after the U.S. independence, when Greece was seeking their independence, um, it was the United States that they looked to for inspiration. Uh, Patrick Henry had said, give me liberty or give me death. In Aia Lavra, uh, Bishop Yermasino said, uh, e It was essentially the same thing. If you go to Hios in the museum, you will see the letters between President Jefferson and Dr. Correas. So it shared democratic uh, values. Um, we have always said that Greece is a reliable ally that can be counted on doing the right thing. So the first democracy and the most prominent democracy have a sacred obligation to protect democracy. Democracy has backslidden in the world for 16 consecutive years. This is something that should be alarming to everyone. And this is nothing short of what type of world we want to live in. Do we want to live in a democracy or do we want to live in an autocracy? Do we want to respect the rules-based international order that has governed Europe since World War II? Or do we want to say it is acceptable for countries to invade their neighbors <laughs> for absolutely no inexplicable reason and cause several humanitarian crises? 
an energy crisis, a food scarcity crisis, not to mention how many people, civilians, have been killed. It's completely unacceptable. They're bombing children's hospitals. This is an, this is an affront to everything that is good and decent in, 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 in this world. So now you have a series of challenges in Europe. And I think President Biden has done an outstanding job in coalescing Europe and our allies to help Ukraine and make sure that it doesn't stand. And Greece has done more than most. I mean, they were one of the first countries uh, to introduce sanctions. They've helped Ukraine from the get-go, and it was consequential. The Russians are looking to punish Greece. It's not going to work. The United States has stepped up. Uh, we're providing 60% of the LNG here, and we'll do a lot more. Greece is one of the leaders in renewables. They're pressing upon that. And, you know, Greece is going to stand up to Russia and, and, and their belligerents um, because that's their philotimo. They're not going to give in to Putin. That's not the makeup of the Greek people. This is about honor. They're going to help the Ukrainians. They're going to stand up for basic human decency. Now, I want to get to what's changed. Uh, I'm not, I'm a political appointee. For years and years and years, my position was filled by a State Department uh, ambassador. What's changed is there aren't any issues in the relationship. Uh, we talked about Greece being a pillar of stability. The relationship is as stable as, uh, as can be. Uh, I had uh, dinner recently with uh, the NATO Supreme Commander, General Cavoli, and he asked my defense attache, what's the relationship here? His opinion. And he said, the relationship is so strong, it's really akin to that of Canada or Australia. That's how far the relationship has come, based on common interests. So I come from the business world, and President Biden, who is a great friend of Greece and understands Greece more than any person who has ever occupied that role, said, we have a wonderful relationship here. Build upon it. But use your expertise from the business world. Work with Andonis to make sure that there is greater trade, greater investment, creation of jobs, um, that Greece is becoming an energy hub, a technology uh, hub, and it becomes the economic leader of the Balkans. And I think Greece is well on their way of doing that, despite a 10-year recession, COVID, and a war in Ukraine that has caused so many secondary impacts, uh, including inflation and, 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 and a food crisis and an energy crisis, where, um, you know, nat gas is probably eight times the price of what it is in the United States. And it's going to present a lot of challenges in Europe, especially this winter. I don't want to be an alarmist, but we're going to have food scarcity issues. We're going to have energy scarcity issues. We're going to have to moderate our use of electricity tremendously to get through the winter. And interestingly enough, Greece is in a great position not only to get through this, but to help other countries do so. They're already helping Bulgaria with their crisis, and we need to uh, make sure that we provide Bulgaria with a lot more uh, help. But we're all interconnected in this world. And, you know, today it was Ukraine. Tomorrow it could be us, it could be one of our neighbors. So, you know, we're at a point in time where we have to say enough. We have to stick together. We have to stand up for each other. Uh, it reminds me of uh, something the chief rabbi of Berlin uh, during the time of Hitler uh, said. The worst thing was not the bigotry. It was the silence. And it was Johann Prince was his name. And he said, 
The United States cannot remain silent. We have to be engaged. We have to be engaged with partners. We can't do it alone. And Greece is one of those seminal partners that we engage with to solve problems all throughout the region. And if you look at where Greece is located, it touches upon the Balkans, North Africa, the Middle East, the Eastern Med, some challenges here. And Greece is one of those partners that the United States works with in a very principled way to solve problems. And as the U.S. ambassador, I'm proud of President Biden's efforts here, but I'm really proud of the relationship that is values-based that we have with Greece. Fabulous, thank you very much indeed. Um, we're very much pressed for time now, but I want to in include your views here, Mr. Mouragos, on this, on this theme of change, um, in, specifically in the context of what's happening in, in Ukraine. How is business changing, and how is the relationship of business with government and the rest of society changing uh, under the weight of this uh, almost existential challenge that we face. In Greece, the last years, we have learned to operate in a. In Greece, we do business in a, a climate which is in crisis. So, uh, crisis management is part of our reality. We've gone, we've gone through a ten-year crisis. Then we had the pandemic. Now we have the war, uh, with many repercussions, both political, social, and economic. So those who do business uh, know that behind an, any risk, there are opportunities. So each business must see how it will evolve, how it will adjust, and this adaptability is a success factor for businesses because businesses, uh, we need to uh, we need to know that we have families, we have people around us that expect from us uh, to find solutions and to create new job positions. The last crisis, uh, of course, we younger people had not experienced a war in Europe, but we never expected that to happen. And so it happens now, and we need to handle the crisis and the repercussions. But having uh, faced different crises of different nature, we need to know how to find a way out. What uh, businessmen need to know is that we need safety, we need a safe environment. So uh, we are uh, happy uh, to partner with um, uh, sound U.S. businesses. And something which is equally important is that we need uh, to uh, take into account the society. So uh, business, um, uh, social responsibility, company uh, programs must be adopted by companies. We as a group, we have a, such a program and we donate one million euros to four pillars, environment, health, education, and local society. And the innovation lies in the fact that citizens will decide how this money will be spent and to which sectors it will be allocated. So as businessmen, we need to find new ways to overcome difficulties. But we need to look at the society and create uh, well-paid, uh, well-remunerated job positions because this crisis uh, must not affect uh, social cohesion. Therefore, businesses along uh, governments have a very important role to play. Therefore, the um, cooperation between business and governments uh, is will be of uh, paramount importance in order to overcome this crisis. Just to show how fast things are going. Just the last week we vote in the parliament a very important law for the restructuring of the LFC shipyards with the participation of an American company, Onyx. And today, before we came here, we had the first meeting with His Excellency the Ambassador of the United States of America, Mr. Tunis, and the DFC from the Washington here in a conference room uh, to fix the timeline of the project. So what we say, we deliver. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to steal two more minutes from your coffee break. I apologize, but I have uh, a question, and this is, if these guys are going to get their coffee, you guys are going to have to be very brief in your answers here. So uh, it's a very simple question. Continuity. What happens next year in Greece uh, after elections, and how do we keep this, um, all of the things that you've talked about, how do you keep them going? What happens after midterms and after 2024 in the United States with the same implication? Briefly, please. We will win the next elections, <laughs> and Kyriakou Mitsotakis will be a single party prime minister again, so no worries. Excellent. Um, history is your guide here uh, over several American presidents of both parties and several prime ministers of both parties. The relationship has only gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. And that will continue. Okay, wonderful. Well, those are encouraging words. Um, please join me in thanking our panel, and then we'll all go off for coffee. Thank you.